Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, your premier source for Second Amendment news. If you're looking for current, up-to-date news on the constant attacks the Second Amendment is under, no matter what state, city, or county it takes place in, you need to do yourself a favor and subscribe to the channel now, because this is where you're going to find it. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is concerning. However, uh, it's not something that we haven't seen before. So today we're going to talk about a bill that was submitted Thursday afternoon, and it's called the Untraceable Firearms Act of 2020. It was submitted by Senator Richard Blumenthal out of Connecticut and uh, piggybacked by a whole host of anti-gunners who I'll name in a moment. Now this is the almost exact same bill that the same Senator Blumenthal submitted back in 2018. That bill went nowhere because the Senate was mostly Republican and it didn't, didn't move. Uh, however, there's a couple different wording differences here this year. And while they're still looking to do the same, there's a couple little changes. So let's talk about it real quick. And hopefully we won't get too angry and I can finish this without losing my mind. So if you're following along at home, like I said, in 2018, Senator Blumenthal submitted the same, almost the same bill. It's like 98% the same. Uh, and that was formerly S3300, again, submitted in 2018. This year's bill, while if you go to uh, congress.gov, the actual text isn't there yet, but I will have a link down below to the text. It's because when this text came out, it wasn't given a number, and it takes a couple days for the Congress website to to catch up. Uh, the current bill is S3743. Again, it's the Untraceable Firearms Act of 2020. And uh, first, let's let's go off of the goons who want to pass this. So in addition to Richard Blumenthal from Connecticut, his cohort, uh, Chris Murphy from Connecticut, is also signed on as a co-sponsor, as well as this list of characters. Uh, in addition to those two, we have uh, Senators Bob Casey from Pennsylvania, Diane Feinstein from California, so you know this is great, right, just because she's there, uh, Senator Kristen Gillibrand, New York, Kamala Harris of California, uh, Maisie Hirono from Hawaii, Amy Klobuchar from Minnesota, yeah, the same one that's fighting to be the vice presidential candidate, her, uh, Edward J. Markey from Massachusetts, who doesn't live in Massachusetts. Also, I'm sorry, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren, also from Massachusetts. She's on here too. Uh, Senator Robert Menendez from New Jersey, Jack Reed from Rhode Island, Chucky e. Schumer from New York, Chris Van Hollen from Maryland, and Sheldon Whitehouse from Rhode Island. Now I'm going to read you a couple things right from the bill because there's so much going on here. I want to be 100% accurate. And again, a link to the text will be down below. And among a lot of other things, this is where it starts out. It says, It is the sense of Congress that, without the enactment of this act, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives, the ATF, has the authority to regulate ghost guns as defined in Section 921A of Title 18 of the United States Code as amended by Section 3 of this act, which means we're going to make some changes if this goes through. Uh, and unfinished frames and receivers. And, number two, the purpose of this act is to clarify and strengthen such authority. Yes, the ATF, you know, the uh, uh, enforcement branch of all things political. Uh, they who do not have the right to make law or interpret law, uh, that all changed. Uh, that all changed with the bump stock ban. Uh, a lot of the channels here, a lot of us uh, 2A channels, gun tubers, were telling you that how dangerous this is. And everybody was saying, well, we don't want to like, die on the hill of the bump stock. This is exactly what happens because we have set a precedent now. The ATF can do this stuff. So this is what we're going to allow, or try to allow the ATF to do now if you're an anti-gunner. Well, they want to amend this statutory definition of firearm. And they want to add the terms unfinished firearm frame or receiver. Now right away your spidey sense should be tingling about what that will do, but we'll continue. They also want to go after, quote, any combination of parts designed or intended for use in converting any device into a firearm and from which a firearm may be readily assembled. They also want to change the term manufacturing firearms to include assembling a functional firearm from a frame or a receiver or a molding, or machining, or 3D printing a frame or receiver, and shall not include making or fitting special barrel stocks or trigger mechanisms to firearms. So they'll let you change your trigger or your barrel if you're one of those shotgunners who want to change barrels, or if you want to change a stock, but we know they can't be 
like telescoping because that would be evil. Um, they're going after your AR kits that you know you can order from anywhere minus your lower. Uh, they're going after the people who build up their own firearms from parts because uh, you know you, why would they want to allow that totally legal thing to keep happening. Uh, they are going after the ability to uh, machine an 80% lower. You know, just a chunk of aluminum, a paperweight. They want to make that paperweight illegal. You know, well, not so much illegal, but we'll get into what they want to do with that. And, of course, 3D printing. No, we can't have you print anything because, you know, freedom. Now, these unfinished frames or receivers or paperweights or plastic things yet to be printed and kits, they would like to subject those manufacturers, distributors, sellers or buyers of these items to the same federal regulations that are applicable to complete firearms to include serialization, licensing, and background checks. And yes, that includes your chunk of aluminum and your upper receiver for ARs. Now, if you've been following this channel, you might remember about, I don't know, it's like seven, eight months ago now, I talked about how the ATF was having problems where they were losing cases, where they were going after people for, you know, illegal manufacture of firearms, but, and it had to do with ARs and lowers and uppers, but the, to the definition, to the letter of the law, the AR upper, an AR lower is not a firearm. And I won't get into more of that because they're probably going to watch this or it'll get to them somehow, uh, but th this is, now you're seeing the fallout of that, they're trying to play catch up. Now, of course, Senator Blumenthal says that he wants this to happen. We have to do this to close loopholes. Now, what he says are that these loopholes allow prohibited persons to obtain firearms. <laughs> well, Senator, criminals don't follow laws. No matter how many laws you want to stack on top of the deck, the criminal will not follow them. So this will do nothing to stop your criminal from obtaining a firearm illegally. It will only affect those constitutional abiding folks who are going to just have their rights trampled on because you are a coward and a socialist. Now they want to also change a couple other definitions. Again, we want to talk about the term ghost gun. Ghost gun will be defined as A, it would mean a firearm, including a frame or receiver, that lacks a unique serial number engraved or cast onto the frame or receiver by a licensed manufacturer or importer in accordance with this chapter, and B, does not include a firearm that has been rendered permanently inoperable. It then goes into a whole bunch of paragraphs regarding how tracing firearms is much more difficult when the firearm doesn't have a serial number. But again, criminals don't follow the law. It also goes on to say it shall be unlawful for any person other than a licensed manufacturer or an importer to engrave or cast a serial number on these or build them. Uh, so it would basically take away your ability as a freedom-loving American who has done absolutely nothing wrong to continue doing totally lawful and legal acts. Just building adult Legos. Also, according to this bill, if it were to pass... Beginning on January 1st of 2022, it shall be unlawful for any person other than a licensed manufacturer or an importer to possess a ghost gun in or affecting interstate or foreign commerce. Also, it shall be unlawful for any person other than a licensed manufacturer or importer to possess a ghost gun with the intent to sell or transfer a ghost gun with or without further manufacturing or to manufacture a firearm with a ghost gun. So what that means is you can't have them possess them or build them if this were to pass. Can't build your own guns, can't assemble AR kits, uh, you know, you can't uh, mill out an 80% lower, you can't print a lower. Yeah. How this would be enforced? Good luck. So there you have it. The Untraceable Firearms Act of 2020 has been uh, submitted. It was read twice in the Senate and it has been assigned to the Senate Committee on the Judiciary. Where we should be concerned, and I will keep an eye on, of course, is in the House. And why do I say that? Well, because the last two years, in 2018 and 2019, there were House versions of this same bill submitted. Uh, they were how HR 6643 in 2018 and HR 3553 in 2019. 
Those, if it gets resubmitted, and it probably will right after the Senate bill, it would probably be submitted this week, um, will, if, if that gets to the floor in the House, it'll pass the House. And it'll go to the Senate, and it might cause a little pressure for senators to act. And why do I say that? Because even the pro-gun Senator uh, Cornyn uh, from Texas, he suggested that he might actually be in favor of of background checks for gun kits. So he was typically a pro-gun guy. And if he's starting to him and haw about this stuff, chances are those other senators on the Republican side who look up to him as leadership might be doing the same. So when you see stuff like that happen, you really got to pay attention. Uh, and uh, that's happening. So Let's keep our eye on these clowns. So there you go. There is the Untraceable Firearms Act of 2020, submitted just a day ago by uh, Senator Blumenthal and backed by all those yahoos that I mentioned earlier. Forward this along to your friends, your family, to your gun shops, to your shooting ranges. Uh, we need to keep an eye on this one. I'll have more as it creeps through. Hopefully it doesn't, but if it does have any movement, you'll see it here. So please subscribe to Guns and Gadgets your premier source for Second Amendment news. All right, everybody, I hope you're enjoying your weekend. Until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, and carry a weapon. Take care, everybody.